Good morning, first grade. Welcome back for another math lesson. We're still on fractions. <clears throat> and remember that a, a fraction is just part of a whole. So we know that this pizza up here is a whole pizza, and this here is a fraction of the pizza. It's just one part, okay? Yesterday, we talked about thirds. Do you remember? One two, three pieces, three equal pieces. That's what makes something thirds. Do you remember, remember that we also talked about how many pieces there are in the whole, how many equal pieces helps us to know the name of the fraction. In this one, since there are one, two, three pieces, we say that this circle has been divided into thirds. Three pieces equals thirds. Who remembers what two pieces equals? If we divide something into two pieces, what does that equal? What do we call each equal part? Halves, okay? That's right, whoops. Okay, what do we call parts of a shape that have two equal parts? Halves, that's right. Yesterday we had a square, and we said that if we had two equal parts, each part would be a half. We talked about being able to divide some shapes into equal parts, and some shapes we cannot divide e into equal parts. What about this shape? Who remembers what this shape is? This shape is a rhombus, or a trapezoid. Okay. We can divide a trapezoid from corner to corner. We could also divide a square from corner to corner. So there's more than one way to divide a shape. We could divide this square from corner to corner, or we could divide it this way from corner to corner, either this way or this way. There's more than one way that you can divide a shape and still have equal parts, but that's the important part is that you have equal parts, okay? Let me pick those up for right now. Okay, let me show you a couple of pizzas, and I want you to tell me which pizza or pizzas have been divided into equal parts? Okay, look at pizza A. This is pizza A. Look at each part carefully. Are they equal? Look at pizza, oh, down here is B. Look at pizza B. Can you see the lines on pizza B? Let me go over them with my dry erase expo marker. There's a line, there's a line, there's a line. Has this one been divided into equal pieces? Up here, let me do pizza A. Okay, now let's look at pizza C. There's the dividing line on pizza C. Is it equal parts? And let's look at pizza D. Are these equal parts? If this was my part and this was your part, would we be getting the same amount? How about on this one? Your mom picks up pizza for supper. You get this piece. Dad gets this piece. Your brother gets this piece. I get this piece. And mom gets this piece. Are those equal pieces? They're not. So you should have guessed that the equal pieces are, the pizzas that have been divided into equal pizza pieces are pizza A, because it has one, two, three, four pieces, and pizza C has been divided into one, two equal pieces. That's what our fractions are all about, equal pieces, okay? We say this is one half of the, this pizza, and we say that this is the other half, it's one half of the pizza, and we know that two halves 
is the same thing as one whole pizza, okay? All right, now I'd like for us to journal fourths today. So I have sent your parents a copy of our journal. I'll show it to you and then I'm gonna go ahead and write it on the dry erase board. Okay, here's what today's journal entry is going to look like. We're journaling fourths, all right? Let me get my dry erase markers. Expo markers, as Riley says. And right after I find my eraser, ah, there it is, my trusty bone. Okay. So at the top, we're going to write fourths. Four, F O U. R and then T H S T H S and I'm going to add a little color around that because you all know how much I love color. I think I'll put a box. like a movie sign and I'll put lights above it. Woohoo! Fourths. Come and enjoy the show of fourths. Actually, I'll add lights to the bottom as well. You can do the same or you don't have to. Some of you like to add a lot of color to your journals and some of you don't. Either way is fine, but do you remember why we use the different colors? Because it helps our information to stand out, to kind of pop out. Okay? And if you wanted to, you could color those in with yellow, like a light at a movie theater. I don't have yellow, so I'm going to hit them with a little green. I need all my markers from school. Although I do have a lot of markers here at home. And dry erase markers and colored pencils and colored pens. Shh, don't tell Mr. Radcliffe. Okay, so there we go, fourths. Now, we wanna say exactly what fourths means. So, fourths means one part of a whole. Don't forget to finger space between your words so that we can read it neatly. One part of a whole that has been divided into Four. Here's how we spell four, and here is the numeral four. Four equal parts. Okay, and that is what fourths are. And remember that the important part here is four equal parts. So you might want to put a little sunshine, spotlight. This is how I'm going to make my spotlight. 
I want to draw lots of attention to that for equal parts because we don't want to forget that. They need to be equal. A little more color here. It's not my best work because I'm working from the side, but you get the idea and you, you do it neatly in your journal. Okay, equal. I'm gonna give it another line there under equal because equal is the important part, okay? Then, Make sure when you're writing in your journal that you skip a space between the lines so it doesn't get all crowded and become hard to read. Because remember, your journal is for you to go back and look at when you forget something. And then you can go back and remind yourself of what it means. All right, now let's talk about how we write fourth or one fourth. I'm gonna, I think I'll use blue how we write it okay we have a special way of writing one fourth just like we have a special way of writing one third and a special way of writing one half. We write one fourth like this. One fourth. Remember that the number on top tells us that this is one part of the whole and the number on the bottom tells us what who remembers how many pieces there are in the whole exactly how many equal parts or pieces number of equal parts. Equal is important. Number of equal parts in the whole. If you run out of room, you, you can go down here. Y'all are very good at making these journals. They're very neat. I hope you've shown them to your parents. I was very impressed with your journals and I hope your parents will be too. Okay, so let's draw a couple of shapes and let's divide it into fours. Remember we had the old cookie, old cookie. Here's our cookie. Cookie is basically in the shape of a circle. That's right. So we could draw a circle and in fact, I will, I'll just make a little circle here. I want it to be nice and neat. You know how I am. So I'm gonna use this cup and I'm gonna trace around the cup to make my circle. Hopefully it doesn't slide around too much. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, then we can divide our circle into force and it doesn't it doesn't matter how you where you draw your lines so long as you have equal pieces you can't draw your lines from top to bottom because then your pieces on the edges would not be as big as your pieces in the middle so you can't do it that way but the way that you can do it is divide it in half from top to bottom, and then divide it in half again from side to side. Okay, and that looks like pretty much like four equal pieces. I probably could move this line over a little bit. I'm gonna try that again. 
think that looks better, okay? We can divide a square into fourths. Let me show you a square that I have. It's been divided into fourths. And here we are. You saw this earlier. Okay, here's my square. It's been divided into fourths, right? From, you can see the different colors. I could divide it this way and this way. Or if I drew an X, I could divide it. I think I'm gonna change my color because I love color. over here because I don't want to get rid of it. Okay, finish my lines here. Okay, then I can divide it from top to bottom. That's just half right now, isn't it? That's just half. I can divide it from top to bottom, and then again from side to side. And there we have fourths, one, two, three, four. So each part <clears throat> is one fourth. This is one fourth. This piece by itself is one fourth. This piece by itself is one fourth, and this piece by itself is one fourth, okay? So we see that there are different ways to divide some shapes. And again, some shapes can't be divided evenly into fourths, like our heart. We couldn't divide a heart evenly into fourths. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, here's our old cookie. One, two, three, four. We've divided the cookie into four equal pieces. Okay? Okay. Now, you can, um, you can go back later and finish your anchor chart. And again, I will text a picture of mine to your parents, and then you can copy it. Or you can pause the video and copy it now if you want. Let me erase this and we're going to play our little matching game again with fourths. I'm going to put all of my little cards out here and we'll find the headers and we'll put all the pieces under the headers that belong in the correct place. start with one fourth since that's what we've been talking about. Here's one fourth. Now we need to find the fraction the way one fourth is written. If we were going to write it as a number we would write it as one fourth and which one of these says one fourth? You got it right here. One fourth. One fourth means one piece of a whole that's been divided into four pieces. Let me slide these down a little bit to give us some room. Okay, now we're looking for the piece. We're looking for the piece that shows us one-fourth of a cookie. We pretend that these are cookies. Which one is one-fourth of a cookie? Did you find it? Here it is, right here. That's one part of a cookie or a whole object that's div been divided into one, two, three, four equal parts. Don't forget equal. Okay, next we're going to have two fourths, like two pieces were colored in. Here's two fourths, and notice they wrote the two on top and the fourths underneath. The word on top tells us how many pieces are 
that we're talking about in the whole, how many parts in the whole, and the bottom number tells us how many the whole object has been divided into, okay? So we're looking for two fours. We're looking for, here's the fraction with a two on the top and a four on the bottom, and this means two parts of a circle that has been divided into four equal parts. Okay, so let's find that. Where is that one? Ah, here it is, right here. Now you can see that there's two pieces that have been colored out of the one, two, three, four pieces. Okay, next let's look for three fourths. There it is. Notice that three is on the top because that's how many pieces we're talking about. Four is on the bottom because that's how many parts there are in the whole. Which shape has been divided into, has been shaded three of the four parts? Yes, it's this one here. Whoops, let's find the fraction three fourths first. Here it is, three, four. So now we're looking for a circle where three parts have been colored out of four equal parts. And here it is. Okay. And last, we're looking for four fourths. <clears throat> Excuse me. Notice the four is on top and the fourths is on the bottom. Okay. Here's a fraction four fourths. That means four pieces have been colored out of a shape that's been divided into four parts. And here it is. And just like two halves equals one whole, and three thirds equals one whole, well, four fourths equals one whole. And you can see when all four of the four pieces have been colored, the whole circle has been colored. Okay. Okay. One more thing I want to show you. Actually, maybe a couple more things. Slide these off. Erase this. I want to show you this little activity here. And here we see four different apple pies. Now you can divide an apple into four equal pieces, but you have to do it from the top down. Stand the apple up and cut from the top down and then turn and cut from the top down again. You can't cut the bottom half off and the top half off and two pieces in the middle because the top and the bottom parts are smaller than the middle. You won't have four equal parts. <clears throat> But if you start at the top and cut down, <coughs> excuse me, you will. Okay, we want to color the part that each fraction shows, okay? So this first one is asking us to color one fourth. You might not be able to see the word one fourth. That's why I'm reading it to you. And so we want to color one fourth of this apple pie. All right, I want you to decide in your mind before I start how much of it is one fourth. Okay, now I'm gonna color one fourth and we'll see if what you thought and what I did are the same thing. Okay, this is one fourth right here. Okay, this pie has been divided into fourths and that is one of the four. And let me just remind you that we write it like this. One part of an object that's been divided into four equal pieces. Okay? Over here, they're asking us to divide to color one half. So, have you decided in your mind how much you should color or I should color? Okay. Is that what you decided right there? That's one half right there. And we can write one half, one half, which means one part of an object.
object that's been divided into two equal parts. All right. Here they want two thirds. So let me write that fraction first. Two thirds. Remember the number on top tells us how many pieces we're talking about or how many to color. The number on the bottom tells us how many equal parts there are. So if they want us to color two of the three parts, then that's going to look like this. One, and I'll change colors just so that you can see easily the different parts. Two. Now I've colored two of the three equal parts. I've colored two of the three equal parts, two thirds. And last, they want us to color three fourths. I'm gonna write that over here, three fourths. Three is the number of equal parts they want us to color. Four is the total number of equal parts in the pie. They want us to color three of the four. So here we go. This is one fourth. This would be two fourths. And this would be three fourths. We've colored three of the four equal pieces. One, two, three of the one, two, three, four equal pieces, okay? Okay, now let's just look real quick before we go. Oh, I have a project at the end of today's lesson for you, so you don't want to leave yet. Let me set that aside. If I know that this is one whole, let's look and see what it looks like when we divide it in half. What it looks like when we divide it into thirds. Do you see that the more pieces we divide it into, the smaller each piece is getting? So here's one whole, here's one half. If we, if we cut a... Hmm, Let's say we cut a um, beef jerky stick in half. Well, I wouldn't be getting a very big piece. Not as big as if I ate the whole thing myself. If I decided to share it with two of you, now each of our pieces is even smaller. If there's three of us sharing it, our pieces are even smaller. So the bigger the number of pieces we have, the smaller each piece is. And if I decide to share it with myself and three of you, which would be four of us, our pieces would be even smaller. Smaller, smaller, smaller. Every time I cut it. Okay? So. But I want to point out something interesting to you. I want you to see, first of all, that two halves is the same thing as one whole. That three thirds is the same thing as one whole. And that one, two, three, four fourths is the same thing as one whole. Also, did you notice that one half is the same thing as Two fourths, here's one fourth, two fourths is the same thing as one half. Hmm, that's an interesting thought. We cannot compare thirds to one half. It doesn't fit. We wouldn't have enough for another third. So they're not the same size. But some fractions are equivalent, equal, they're the same. For example, one half being the same as two fourths. Okay, so that's an interesting thought for you to keep in mind. I'm gonna send you 
this the little worksheet that has these fractions on it. You can color them, cut them out, and play with them, okay? And see what you can do with that. Okay, now that we have learned all about fourths, I have a little project that you can do today. This will be great for you homeschoolers. Since we know about fourths, I made us this little top. And it can spin. Let me see if I can find a tall, flat surface that I can spin this on. Let me just lift up my journal into the camera's view and hope it doesn't fall off. Okay, hey, we gotta keep it flat or it will fall off, okay? See, we've got a little top there, spinning little spinning top, okay? So let me tell you how I made this spinning top and what it has to do with fourths. First of all, I took a piece of cardboard, just off of an Amazon box, we all have Amazon boxes, or any box, it doesn't matter, but I took a piece of cardboard, and I took a, a cup, and the size of the cup doesn't really matter, you don't want it too small, but I just used a plain old plastic cup. I held it down tight, and I traced around it to make the circle, okay? Then I divided my circle into fourths. While it was still on, the cup, okay? Well, I mean, while it's still on, before I cut it, you can divide it. It's a little bit easier if you do that, okay? Then, finally, the last thing that I did was, oh, let me show you the dividing lines here so nobody is confused. Hmm, I'll need a marker. Let me see if I can find one. I have so many. Got one my dividing line and I'll, I'll show you this is not a dark marker there in the other room okay but you can see that I divided the circle into fourths and that is going to be kind of important for you to divide it into equal fourths I even made a couple of little marks to help me at 12 o'clock and three o'clock if I were pretending this was a clock face, at six o'clock and at nine o'clock, and we have four equal parts. Then I cut it out. You just go right ahead and cut it out right on the line and try to be careful and get it nice and round. That's what will help it spin easier. Okay. Cut slowly and carefully. Remember to turn your scissors as you're cutting. If it's too hard for you to cut this, you can get a grown-up to help you, okay? And then, there we go. It's pretty nice and round. Then I'll take my scissors and I'm gonna make a hole right in the middle. It does not have to be a big hole. Let me make it a little bigger though. I am gonna go all the way through, but just barely, okay? And I'm gonna kind of tuck the cardboard down on this other side. Okay, I hope you can see that. Yep, you can see the hole, okay? Then, you're, if I were you, I would decorate first. See how I decorated mine? I just drew some lines so that I had equal fourths, and then I just drew some designs, but you could color each fourth a different color, or you don't have to decorate it at all if you don't want to, but I did. Then you're going to take a skewer. That's what this is, just a bamboo skewer. You could ask your parents about it, and if they don't have one, you could use almost anything. If they have a small dowel, if they have an old pencil or pen that they don't mind you using. You're going, first you're going to um, glue your, it doesn't matter, on the bottom there's a marble and four pennies, and that's why it's important for us to divide this in, into equal fours. But you're gonna take a marble, just any marble will do. Regular size is better than the bigger ones, although experiment. Try a big one and see what happens, okay? You're gonna put a puddle of glue right there with I would use hot glue because it cools and dries quicker. So you just put a big old puddle of hot glue right there. If you don't have a hot glue gun, your parents can get one at Walmart for $2.60, I think, okay? 
and you want it to glue this marble right where that hole is, okay? And let it cool really well. It'll kind of sit there, okay? It's, but it's not gonna go down in the hole because we don't want it to go all the way down in the hole. We want it to be up like that, okay? Caught it. Then, on the once that cools and dries and it's good and hard, then you're gonna take a skewer or something and you're gonna glue it to the other side. And you wanna try to get these right in the middle. The more in the very center you have it, the better it will spin. Okay, then once, and you wanna pile the glue up on that skewer or pencil. You see how, how high up I piled the glue? Because we, this isn't gonna go through the cardboard and we need this to stay stable. We don't want it wobbling around or falling off because you're gonna spin it. And when you spin it, you're gonna put force on it and we don't want it to the force to cause it to come off right and uh, once that is cool and that side is cool with the marble then you can add your four pennies here's where it was important that you divide it into fourths four equal pieces you're gonna hot glue pennies to the edge and try to glue them equally close to the edge. If you want to put it right on the edge, that's fine, but make sure you put all four right on the edge. Or if you want it in from the edge a little bit, that's fine too. Just make sure each one of them is the same distance from the edge. The reason that we put these pennies on here is because it helps, the weight helps it to spin longer. If it's light, it isn't going to spin very long, but if it's a little bit heavier on the edges, it'll spin longer. That's called inertia, which you'll talk about much later in school. But for now, you can just trust me. Actually, you can even experiment. Before you glue the pennies on, spin it and see how long it'll spin for. And then after you glue the pennies on, spin it again and see how long it'll spin for. I'd love to see your projects. So have your parents take a picture and send it to me. All right, love you guys, miss you, bye. We'll see you tomorrow.